Welcome to The Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Immersive Engineering. How to max out your water wheel setup, as well as make it look pretty in the process. So to start off with, you can see I have a little bit of uh, Ender I.O. mixed in here, just so you can see the output. Uh, the maximum output you can get from a triple wheel water uh, triple water wheel setup is 88 RF per tick. And uh, I currently have it set up with just some LV. Uh, nothing really uh, too crazy. And I mean, this whole setup I had uh, from the uh, the other uh, getting started, um, but it it's not that bad. I mean, it's it's kind of pretty. I've got some, uh, some ways that you can actually recreate this as well. And I'm going to show you how you can do it, uh, how best to set up your water wheels and in the process make it look really nice so uh, let's let's start off with that so let's uh, start off by picking an area you're gonna need an area that is at least five wide and nine long at water level now I currently am using a uh, light blue stained glass to represent water so you're gonna have to uh, kind of clear out the area a bit uh, I have it set up here so that you can see how many uh, how, where to place these things. You don't have to waste a lot of them. I have an exact, an exact list of all the materials used at the end of this, but uh, basically you're just going to be uh, kind of clearing out the water as you go. Remember, it's going to be a uh, five by nine. So let's just clear this out and I will show you the exact shape. So anywhere that there is a raised area, it's basically just, you know, five by nine, 45 blocks to start with. It's really really basic uh, setup, nothing too fancy. And basically the, uh, the this double wide area here is going to be the area that is facing out into the water. So you're actually going to need a uh, five or six block drop down from the, uh, the surface here uh, in order for this to function properly with a bridge to land. But otherwise, you could always just use it as a solo setup that just looks really cool. Some kind of, uh, uh, you know, immersive engineering device. You don't have to have it with a bridge setup. You can actually uh, link a bunch of these water wheels together in a row and make it just look like a uh, factory almost. So it, it's up to you how you want to do it. But uh, let's move on to step two, which you're going to need to put some of uh, these wooden posts around. You've got four of them on the four corners. You also have some treated wood scaffolding which you're going to want to put five in each of these. And uh, that's going to get you, uh, well, these pillars here. And then there's going to be one of them, preferably towards this uh, this back little gap here, that is uh, six tall. You could, you could do it uh, on the other one as well. Either way, it's just a matter of this is going to allow you to gain access to your creation because if you remember, uh, scaffolding will act as a ladder and therefore you can climb up top and get to the top of your build easier this way. Later on, you can replace this uh, block with a regular wooden block, but uh, we'll get into that in a minute. So we now have wooden posts and we have the treated scaffolding. Next step is going to be this here, where we add in a whole bunch of treated wood slabs. Uh, if you count up from the ground, it's going to be on top of the fourth uh, treated wood scaffolding block. So therefore, one, two, three, four, you put these down, put some down here. And this one here is going to be double wide that is facing land. The one that's going to be out in this area here is going to be just single. It's not double wide. So you probably are going to want to just like butt it up against the uh, the posts like I have here. So, you know, you've, if you are putting it down just at the top of the post, that should probably give you a good guideline of uh, how high this needs to be. Then you take a bunch of the uh, fences and you can place these around. You're going to want to put two on the inside of each of these. Let's bring these in here. Uh, you're going to want a, uh, four of these wall brackets. Well, at least four. Uh, we can get into more of those shortly. But uh, once you've got that, you should have a pretty good idea of what this is looking like. So then you put five of these across here and you've got kind of this cage across the top. Now the reason you've got this big gap in the center, if you look down here, you have your connector, your uh, kinetic dynamo. You're going to need space for uh, some kind of uh, connector on top of it. It doesn't actually switch to a side or a bottom or anything like that. I mean, see, it's all uh, blank. And therefore, this is a little bit more decorative, looks a little bit nicer. So that's what I went with on it. But that's why there's a big gap in the middle. 
So now that you have that in place, we go on to the next step. So we've got the top set up and we are working on the bottom. So you are going to be putting a bunch of fencing, basically outlining the entire outer edge of the base build. So wherever there is not a fence post, let's see if I can actually get out of here. Well, I just got trapped. Uh, you are going to be putting uh, fencing along this entire structure. This is mostly to keep the water from uh, escaping. Uh, and then you can take more wall brackets along the bottom and put them in these little corners here up on top. Whoops. Uh, if you want to know how these function, if you uh, click on the top of the block, it goes up. If you click on the bottom of the block, it goes down. So these are a little bit different from the wall, uh, from these uh, wooden posts, where if you use a, a hammer on them, they will always be up until you put something on it and then it will face the direction just to connect to it. So it's a little different from those. But I recommend not putting any lamps on these just yet because otherwise they're gonna stick out and just get in your way while you're building the rest of the thing. Uh, I recommend you do it at the very end. So with that in place, you can then also start the top layer. So it's recommended you take your uh, slabs and you're just making a line. You're not going to connect, whoops, you're not going to connect these across because you want the water to actually stick out. You see right here, uh, there's a bunch of water across the top. You want that to be visible. Uh, you're going to have these go all the way back to here where the, uh, the, the first fence post on the back half is start putting down your treated wood slabs and there you go now you have yourself your first setup and if you look here i currently have that uh, treated wood scaffolding once again to get up here it makes it much easier if you leave one in place at least so you can get up to the top and it looks a little bit different but you can always keep it there just in case for uh, a ladder from getting up from the water as well uh, you could even duplicate it on both sides and uh, it's just a, a personal preference there now once you're done with this step here, before you move on to the final stage of installing the wheels and water, you're going to want to choose which side you want the power to come out from. You cannot have it on both sides because uh, power only comes out from one side of a water wheel. Even if you put one of those kinetic dynamos on there, it's not going to uh, transmit out both sides. It's only going to come out one side of a water wheel. So once you pick the side, just put one of these uh, fence posts down and that's what your uh, kinetic dynamo is going to be attached to. Moving on, we go to the last area where we can start connecting things up. At this point, uh, feel free to start putting out your lanterns. Uh, you're probably going to want to, uh, you know, put them on uh, second and not first because otherwise you're going to run into this problem here. And you want to not put it on the post, you want to put it on the block that's sticking out. And it will automatically turn down so that you can see where it's at. Moving on to the back, you can repeat this same thing where, let's see, put this here, whoops, uh, sorry, that's just a creative bug, nothing to do with uh, uh, in regular uh, survival mode here. Let's see here, put this in place, and you have this. Now you can see I still have big open spaces in the top. You're going to need this so that you can insert your water uh, into this unit. And if you look here, you can see that I currently have the kinetic dynamo with uh, the circle facing me. You don't want this circle of uh, uh, this coil of copper facing you. You want it facing away. So just right click a couple times with your hammer if you have it facing in the wrong direction and you'll see that it is now facing in the center. Uh, of course, this is where you're going to have difficulty a lot of people don't understand how water wheels work. So let's grab a wheel. Whoops, uh, a well, no, a wheel. I got three of these here. And you have to place it on here. If you change the kinetic dynamo after you place the water wheels, you might as well break the water wheels off and then put them back on again once you're done moving the kinetic dynamo around. It's, it's just going to make things difficult but I'm putting on the water last so that you guys can see the best way to do this. So you can see now I have a dry setup of how this is currently working. Now I take water bucket and you can put it in the top, but I find putting it in the top tends to be a little confusing first. So let's put it in the bottom. Now, if you look down here, uh, it's going to be going in, you know, clockwise direction if you're facing your kinetic dynamo on the side. So therefore, I am going to want the water to come towards me. Therefore, I put it up here and it will fall down into this area. Now, if you wait a couple moments, it will eventually slowly move all by itself because that is moving water that is touching the paddles. 
There we go, working like a charm. Now, the second part is you're gonna want it to push at the top. So then you insert at the top, three buckets there, and then that's going to help push a little bit more. And you can see that that is actually flowing water once again, and it's flowing away from you. Then you've got your last three buckets, which are just up against these three here. And that, my friends, is a completed setup. Now, if you're curious as to how this is, uh, if it's actually working properly, I will demonstrate this is what this is for, Because just because it's a very easy uh, visual setup. Uh, let me plunk this down and uh, I will show you the, um, the LV wire connector here. Connect these up, hammer this so you can see, and you can see it is currently doing 88 RF per tick in this little box. And you can modify this as you want. You know, you, this is where you can uh, then start filling in with the uh, slabs on top of this so that you can cover this up and turn it into a dock if you want, like I have demonstrated above. And you know, you can keep uh, uh, coming back until you get to a uh, the top of a hill or something like that, or you can raise a hill up to it. Up to you how you want to do it, really. You can also replace this block if you want with another wooden block uh, just so that it matches the rest or you can leave it in place so you can always have a uh, access method to get up from the ground if you do not have access to flight options <laughs> or very large jumps. Now if you want to know how much uh, materials is involved in making this setup uh, without any extra like relays or cables or whatever coming off of this and without going uh, over this edge here like I uh, don't have any of these it's just as you see now then it is as you see here. 56 treated wood planks, 20 treated wood scaffolding, 27 treated wood slabs, treated wood fence, you have 35, eight wooden wall mounts, four wooden posts, four lanterns, three water wheels, an engineer's hammer to make adjustments, nine buckets of water, one kinetic dynamo, a LV wire connector, and some copper coil. And that is just for this setup. Now I have an alternate setup that actually is a little bit less expensive on the treated wood. Uh, as you can see here, there's a little bit less wooden fence uh, and I believe a little bit less treated wood slabs, but it also involves dark oak boats, dispensers, and stone pressure plates. The reason for this is uh, because you could actually turn this into a boat launch, and this is where I think uh, this works pretty good. Now, I added in the, uh, the fencing here, and just for those that are curious, you can see we've got uh, one two, three, four, five, six blocks high for this level. Uh, and uh, this is just so that it looks sort of like a ladder up. But the idea is when you come to the end, let's empty out my hands here, you just walk up onto a pressure plate. You uh, put down a dispenser with your boats at the end here. You step up on it, automatically launches a boat. You click into it. And then you are, of course, probably gonna need to turn around <laughs> but once you do, you can then launch yourself off into the water. It's pretty darn cool. Uh, it works really well. I, I like it quite a bit. Um, the, <laughs> the boat launch idea came to me after I had it fully assembled. And of course, it's, it's working with the full 88 RF per tick as well. Nothing's really changed. I just knocked out the, uh, these fence posts here at the front and the, um, the treated wood slabs so that I wouldn't l catch those as I launched off. Replace the dispenser, put on a pressure plate and some boats. And there you go, you've got yourself a boat launch as well that uh, kind of shoots you off into the ocean. So, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, I know that I always enjoy uh, doing these tutorials for you guys. Uh, if you liked it, the video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share the mischief with others. And until next time, folks, I'll see ya.